So, Lone Rider here, and I want to talk about lessons from Watcha. Now, over the nearly three years that myself and many other local cyclists, as well as other people who were just interested in fair government policy, um, were uh, involved in the effort to try and get mountain biking access in Union County, in particular to remove the ban on mountain biking at Watchin Reservation. Um, I learned a lot of lessons, um, and they weren't the nice kind, to, uh, to paraphrase singer and songwriter Jim Croce, the, the late, great Jim Croce. And, um, you know, uh, ever since then, I, I can't help but factor that into, when I look at other things going, going on in the world, uh, current events, um, other government positions or, or policies, whether at the local, county, or federal level, um, I, I have to see it uh, with respect to the lessons I learned uh, during those several years. And uh, I did a lot of the research and a lot of the Open Public Record Act requests. And I got a look behind the curtain, not only at what was going on at the time when we went to meetings and when we met with you know government officials and the contractor they had hired and people like that, uh, but also uh, you know, perusing the documents, looking at source material, you know, reading 20 year old, you know, government white papers. Uh, I came across a lot of things about how, how the government conducted itself, uh, both in the past and in the present. And there was a lot of stuff that was really sketchy and a lot of stuff that was really questionable and a lot of stuff that, you know, um, these are life lessons they don't teach you in, in civics class. Okay. So one of the first things that I, I want to talk about is the issue of um, consistency. All right. One of the things, there's a lot of things I learned from, from this effort. One was, you know, if it wasn't documented, there may be a reason why, um, you, know, uh, and a, you know, a variety of other things. But one of the things that I, I really looked at is the issue of the issue of consistency. If somebody gets something, you know, right, uh, that's one thing. But if you have five different stories for how something happened, either only one of them is right and the other ones are all wrong, so somebody's lying, or if all those five different stories are coming from the same people and the same entity, whether it's the same person or not, like, for example, the Union County government here in New Jersey uh, is the same legal entity. If you have one person from the government says one thing, one person from the government says another thing, it's different people saying it, but legally it's the, it's the same entity. And they work for the same entity, and therefore they should have the same, the same uh, information. So, you know, if you have multiple different stories for how uh, something simple, like let's say banning bike access in a park occurred, um, there are several things you can deduce from that, but one is that there's a problem with the accuracy of the record, flat out. Whether somebody's lying, whether whether stuff was just done in secret, and then that's why nobody really knows what's going on, so they're just guessing. Um, you know, whatever the reason, but the point is, all of these raise their own questions. For example, somebody might say, well, they're not lying, it's just that nobody remembers because this was done on the down low without any public input or, you know, anybody really knowing what was going on. A bunch of guys got together in a back room, which is what turns out happened, by the way, according to the government's own permission, when they banned mountain biking in spring of 1995. It was uh, a bunch of unelected people who got together in a back room uh, without any public input or public knowledge um, and created this ban. Right? Now, that raises other questions. You know, why was this being done by the unelected? Uh, why was it being done without any public input why, or, or knowledge? You know, why was it being done in secret uh, if, if this was a, a laudable policy and something that people would support because it was right? you got to wonder. Um, but, but the fact is, even if you were to try and justify the inconsistency in the, in, in the recall of the stories about what happened by saying, well, it was, just, it was done in secret, so that's why nobody really knows what happened and they have different stories, you're still left with the problem of, then why was it done in secret? It just raises another question about the conduct and the um, the transparency of government. There's no, once you get to the point that you have like 
three or four different stories about how something happened. You can't really bring it all back. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Uh, at that point, it's it's the fact that more than one story exists is evidence of the fact that there's a problem with the veracity of the, the, the stories. Now, is, is it that one person's telling the truth and two are lying or three are lying? Or is it that nobody's telling the truth? Or is it that the, just nobody knows because it was done in secret? These are all questions that come from that. But the point is, once you get to the point where there's, you know, multiple public stories, you're left with the question of, what am I supposed to make of that? Yeah, you know, the government can't get its story straight if you're having 20 years to do so. Something is wrong here. And that that was the the, the significance of inconsistency as a um, as a warning light, as a, a canary in a coal mine, as a um, you know, a, a light bulb going off saying something is wrong. If you're reading a newspaper or you're, you're listening to the news or whatever, and you hear somebody make contradictory statements, or you hear somebody make a statement that's nonsensical based on who they are and what their job is. Example, the county spokesman, uh, Sebastian Gillia, was quoted in the July 2014 uh, Star-Ledger newspaper article on the subject of mountain bikers challenging the ban. Uh, this was right around the time I got involved in the, in the effort. Um, he was quoted in that newspaper article saying he had no idea why it's banned. It's just kind of been that way for a while. Well, I don't know. Well, uh, we got a couple problems with this. One of them is that he's the county spokesman. His job is to articulate and explain the reasons behind county policy. Now, if he can't do that, I mean, he's either obviously very bad at his job and maybe the county should get another spokesman. Or he's got something to hide. Or, again, the policy was conducted so much in secret and, you know, that maybe that's why the county spokesman to this day had to guess about why mountain biking would have been banned and flat out said in the newspaper article he had no idea. I mean, it, th that should be a warning sign. All right. Something should be – the reporter should have asked a follow-up question. She already had the guy on the phone or whatever. You don't you – don't, if you're a reporter with a working brain, with, with, you know, functioning brainwaves and, and a pulse, and, and somebody tells you something that's contradictory, again, either a contradictory statement or a statement that contradicts other facts that you know about them or their position or their, their responsibility. Um, you know, uh, if you have somebody who's a spokesman for uh, an entity, in this case for the, the Union County government, and he confesses complete and total ignorance, about the uh, you know rationale behind a Union County government policy, you have to ask yourself why. Not only that, but he didn't he didn't even offer up any um, you know statement about like well I, I can't say what people were thinking years ago, but this is the rationale for currently enforcing it. Nor did he say I'm not sure what the rationale was originally, but here's the the ordinance or or law number in the county code that that um, you know contains the prohibition that authorizes the prohibition nope um which brings to another contradiction from from uh watching in a contemporaneous memo from the 1990s that was released as part of an open public record act request uh they did mention an old ordinance but they never said which one it was um it was just an old ordinance which was interesting now, in my very first Open Public Record Act request, I asked for the copy of the legislation and everything involved in its passage, notice to the public, commentary at meetings, um, um, you know, the, the, the minutes of the meeting, etc. cetera. Um, now, they eventually provided uh, minutes of the meeting. There was no notice ever provided, so who knows if it was ever published, meaning who knows if the legislation in question is even legal, um, because that's a part of what you're required to do to pass legislation. Either they didn't maintain it in their records along with everything else, or they, you know, never did it. The question then becomes, well, why would they throw it away? They maintained everything else. So then you have to ask, was it ever done? Which then, then you have to ask, was, was the law, was the ordinance properly enacted? Is it then therefore legal? Uh, but then you're left with the fact that the wording of the ordinance itself isn't about mountain biking. It's about roads, sidewalks, paths, and not blocking cars. Um, 
So, you know, when I read the county code before I even got involved and filed an open record act request, I was looking for anything in there about bikes on the trails, mountain biking, bicycles on the dirt trails in the woods, etc. I couldn't find a single thing that contained the word trail and bike in the same sentence. And I couldn't find anything specifically about off-road cycling, mountain biking, biking on the trails, etc. Um, it's worth noting I didn't just use the word mountain biking. I used any permutation I could think of. I spent days doing electronic searches of the document. You know, every time I would come up with a new idea, I would run it through a search. In addition to actually reading all over 200 and something pages of the Union County Code, um, which is probably more than you can say the freeholders have ever done or anybody in the Union County government, because it's long and it's not fun. Um, anyway, I couldn't find anything that said you weren't allowed to ride your bike in the park, uh, to mountain bike in the park. So I um, filed an Open Public Record Act request. And one of the things I requested was the ordinance or the law that, that was enacted and anything related to its passage. And they come back immediately with, we have nothing to provide you because the county never acted to ban mountain biking. But then they later say, but there was an old ordinance and we just applied that. Well, if that old ordinance really did ban mountain biking, then wouldn't that be the ordinance I'm asking about? So the county did act. So you do have to provide stuff. Eventually, they, again, they did provide stuff about this ordinance and say which ordinance it was. And it's worth noting that this is the first time in the history of the mountain bike ban since 1995 that this ordinance, which turned out to be this road, sidewalks, paths, and not blocking cars ordinance from 1983. Um, this was the first time since the ban was created in the back room by the unelected in 1995 that this ordinance from 1983, which they're now saying authorized the ban, was actually linked in writing to that ban. So not in 1995 when the ban was created, not prior to 1995 when they were considering banning it, but 20 years, some, 20 some years after the fact is the first time that that ordinance from 1983 is specifically linked in writing to the ban from 1995. Why wait to 2014? Isn't that strange? So somebody starts asking about it. Um, more contradictory stories. One of the contemporaneous uh, email exchanges uh, and memos going back and forth between the government people from 1995, uh, or I should say from the 1990s, it may have been from 1996, but it was from immediately after the ban was enacted, so either late 1995 or early 1996, was a memo that, um, uh, in a series of correspondence between the Parks Department people in the Union County Parks Department. And one of the things it contained was it contained Daniel Benier of the Parks Department, a major mountain biking opponent, and somebody who lived in the park, which, I mean, a huge conflict of interest. You know, you live in the park and you hate mountain bikes. And surprise, the government policy is to ban mountain bikes. Gee, I, I wonder. But um, he was communicating with other county officials. And one of the things he explicitly says is, um, you know, this issue, quote, this issue has begun to garner significant publicity unquote. And then he says he wants them to make a crash public relations effort to rush awareness of the ordinance, which we didn't find out until 2014 was the 1983 ordinance, because they never said which ordinance, of the ordinance to the forefront. And I got a copy of one of those um, attempts at a PR crash course. Um, it was a, a flyer that was supposedly distributed to bicycle shops in the area. Uh, basically saying that there's an old ordinance that bans mountain biking on the trails, and they've decided to begin enforcing that. Now, here's the problem. The ordinance actually doesn't even contain the word trail. You could uh, hem and haw, does paths really mean trail? Or, you know, even though nowhere in the county maps or any other county literature are these trails described as paths. Um, and in fact, in 2016, there was a big problem. There was an email exchange that turned up in another Open Record Act request between government officials, where one government official was telling another, um, people read the new signs we put up that say no biking and reference that ordinance on the bottom. And when they check the ordinance, they think it means they can't ride on the paved paths. So one of the government people suggested they make a second sign and put it under the other one, saying that um, it actually means you can't ride on the trails, even though the ordinance doesn't say trail and says path. It act we're actually posting this other sign to say you can't ride on the trail. So even though the ordinance doesn't say, in other words, they were going to try and correct themselves by posting another sign telling people don't bother 
I know the previous sign cites an ordinance, but disregard what that ordinance says. This is what we really mean. They actually said this. My God, you know. Um, but we're left with the fact, you know, somebody could raise the argument. Uh, that memo from the 1990s, 95, 96, whatever, where Daniel Bernier was saying to the other government people, let's rush awareness of the ordinance to the forefront. Um, someone could say, well, that's reference to the ordinance. So, no, they didn't wait until 2014 to link the two, the ordinance from 83 and the ban from 95. Well, yes, they did, because they never said which ordinance it was. And in particular, the way they described it was an old ordinance that forbids biking on the trails. And then you read the ordinance. There's nothing in there that would make you think it has anything to do with the trails. And then again, the contradictory statements in their very first response to my Open Record Act request. The government denies that anything exists about the passage of an ordinance because the freeholders never passed an ordinance to ban mountain biking. But then they say, um, oh, but there was this old ordinance. So the freeholders did pass an ordinance to ban mountain biking? Or are you kind of like admitting that you just repurposed an old ordinance after the fact, after it was already enacted into law without ever bothering to have the wording amended, you know, properly by the freeholders taking a vote. Um, just inconsistencies. And the one thing that really comes out from, you know, as far as a lesson from Wachung is that when the government can't get its story straight about what it did itself, when, you know, there's no, there's no clear record. When they have to tell you that an ordinance says one thing, even though it says another, well, but it really means this. When they say on one hand that no law was passed, and then on the other hand, oh, there was an old law, but we won't tell you which one it is. And then five open public record request follow-ups later, they tell you which one it is. You go and you read it, and it turns out it doesn't say what they've been saying for 20 years. It does say. And then you realize that that's actually the first time in 20 years or over 20 years that they actually linked it in writing specifically to the ban that previously all they had said was an old ordinance and never said which one. And when they bothered to attempt to describe it at all, they described it by saying it referred to and contained words that aren't even in the actual ordinance. My God, my head wants to explode. I need one of those Ross Perot pie charts to keep all this crap straight. And, you know, the funny thing is all of this could have been avoided if in the beginning, when they banned mountain biking, citizens had just said, you say this is against the law. What law? Tell me. You know, there was no contemporaneous newspaper coverage about the inaction of the mountain bike ban because it was done behind closed doors. But what's interesting is after the ban was enacted, there were a handful of news blurbs uh, describing concerns among people about the ban. And one of them uh, I happen to have a copy of was an old article in the Star Ledger um, that somebody had physically cut out and saved and posted a scan of online on a mountain bike forum. And I, I, if you blow it up, you can just about make out the text. And I read the article, and what was interesting is people were saying exactly the same thing they were saying in 2016 and 17, so basically like last year and the year before, when this was controversy was coming to a close after three years of effort to get mountain bike access, and repeated promises by the government that, you know, they were finally willing to, to withdraw the ban. Um, of course, then they turned around and they actually expanded that ban to every county park. So they not only didn't allow mountain bike access at Watcham, they effectively created new trail closures. The ban on mountain biking was only ever about Wachon. And then all of a sudden, after 20 years, it's about every county park. Strange. Just like after 20 years, all of a sudden, now they've magically managed to realize that all along there was actually a legislative authorization for this. But they never specified what in 20 years. Doesn't that strike somebody as strange? Um, and again, back in the, the newspaper article from the 90s, people were saying things like, uh, nobody knows what the penalty is going to be. People are afraid that they're going to start coming after you, even if you're riding your bike on a road that goes, you know, through the park, uh, say Skytop Drive and Mountainside, that sort of thing. And um, why would there be all this uncertainty? Well, gee, because nobody ever told anybody what law there was that authorized this. There's, if there's an actual piece of legislation, whether it's an ordinance or whether it's a law or whether it's whatever, but actual legislative authority, you don't need to guess what the penalty is going to be or how it's going to be applied or what it applies to. Because you read it in the law. You read it in the ordinance. The only reason that at the time people would have had these questions is because that ordinance hadn't been picked out as something to say, well, we uh, this is what justifies it. I think they only did that in uh, 2014 because people like me were asking questions. And they needed to find some way to say, well, this wasn't just fiat government. This wasn't just 
a bunch of goons in the back room sticking their hands in the air and saying, by the power of Grayskull, we declare this. Uh, that it actually did have, you know, some kind of legislative basis uh, in the passage of uh, proper ordinance or law in accordance with, you know, the, the way our government is supposed to be conducted, which, hint, isn't a bunch of guys getting together behind closed doors and doing stuff without anybody uh, having any knowledge, awareness, or input on it. Um, you know, uh, now they may have only linked it in 2014 for other reasons. Maybe that's, they just realized, they had an epiphany, like Archimedes coming up out of his bath. Oh my God, I think I've got it. You know, or Doc Brown falling off the toilet seat and back to the future, hitting his head and discovering the secret of flux capacitor. Maybe, maybe, uh, Dan Bernier fell off his toilet and conked his head and said, oh my God, I just remembered there's this old ordinance from 1983. Somehow I doubt it. But maybe. Give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't know what they were thinking. But what I do know is that the first time it, this ordinance from 1983 was linked in writing specifically to the ban on mountain biking from 1995 was in 2014. And it was only because in a follow-up request, I repeatedly asked them, and I said, you say on one hand that there's no ordinance that bans mountain biking and none was ever passed, but then you say there's an old ordinance. Which is it and what's the ordinance? And that's when they finally, for the first time in 20 years, a, a citizen could actually look it up and see if it said what they said it said. And surprise, it didn't. Um, so basically the lesson from Watchung here is that when the government can't get its story straight to something fishy, if all they really did was hold a vote, pass an ordinance, and then ban mountain biking, uh, it would be a very clear story. It would be, we did this, we held the vote, we the people had their say, the, the freeholders, which is the legislative body at the county level, voted, and there's a ban. And this is the ordinance that bans it, and this is what the penalty is, and if you don't want that anymore, then you have to talk to the freeholders and tell them to repeal or amend ordinance XYZ. And nobody would... It would be on the record. This ordinance was passed on Monday, the 25th of whatever, uh, you know, at, at 5.65 p.m. or something. And there'd be no question about it, no second story or third story or, or fourth story that's different. It would just be, this is what happened, bam, 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 bam. When instead it's like, well, maybe it was this, maybe it was that. And there's all these questions and the government can't get a story straight about hardly any aspect. Uh, of the history of the ban or the ban itself, the only thing they can really agree on is that the actual ban was created in 1995 by the unelected in a backroom meeting without any public knowledge or input. And that they never documented a single problem with mountain biking at Watchem one way or the other. Those are the only two things they can agree on. But this is still county policy. So basically the lesson here is if you have some serious inconsistencies, there's more going on than they're telling you. There's something wrong. Uh, you better start asking questions or you're going to find out that your government can't be trusted on that particular issue or maybe other issues along with the rest of the public when it's too late. So lesson from Watchung here is inconsistency usually signals deeper problems. Um, and one last inconsistency, uh, it's kind of funny in the Open Record Act request where they said on one hand, there's no, there's no ban when no ordinance was passed so we have nothing to provide you about that but there was an old ordinance one of the things they said was well we suspended enforcement of it from 93 and then just resumed enforcement in 95 but the same guy daniel Bernier, in his mountain biking white paper written in 1995 actually says that they considered banning mountain biking in 1993 but decided not to and decided to instead incorporate it in the official trail plan um, because it was already an ongoing thing there. Um, huh. Okay, so if they were considering banning it in 1993, it wasn't already banned in 1993. Um, so this idea that it was just allowed from 93 through 95, and then the ban was arbitrarily resumed uh, in accordance with some old ordinance, which they never said which ordinance until 2014, really raises some questions. It also raises a question that in an NJ.com article from, uh, I think it was 2000. May of 2016, something like that, maybe 2017, I'm trying to remember, but it was uh, basically two or three years after um, myself and many other people first got involved in 2014. Um, it was right before the final vote to uh, kill the idea of mountain biking and watch them. Um, so 
you know, once we got involved, they, they were started promising they were going to end the ban. And But we were still doing research to try and figure out the history of it because nobody could get their story straight. And then they kind of sat in their hands for two years. And then they had a vote to cancel the whole thing um, after repeatedly promising that they were going to end the ban. And that's when they expanded it to not only the rest of Watson, but all the other county parks as well. Um, now, here's the problem. In this article in NJ.com, the government is stated to claim that mountain biking was actually arbitrarily allowed from 94 through 95. But in the Open Public Record Act request from the summer of 2014, they said 93 through 95. What? And then in the original, in the mountain biking white paper, which the same guy wrote in 1995, so it's the most contemporary source we can find with the initiation of the ban itself, he said basically, again, that it wasn't banned as of 1993. They were considering banning it in 93, but decided not to. So the there's the, so many different stories, they can't even get them straight. And then the, the idea of arbitrarily deciding not to enforce an ordinance and then resuming enforcement, whether it's over a one or two year period, depending on who you talk to, you then have another thing. Uh, Ron Zuber from the Parks Department, a modern contemporary of Daniel Benier, who, by the way, is still on the Parks Department 20 years later, um, collecting a, over $100,000 a, uh, $100, a year salary uh, from the Union County Parks Department while he occasionally freelances as a wildlife management consultant running local deer hunts. Um, and in all the articles on that freelancing, by the way, he's represented himself solely as a private consultant. So, you know, I mean, Union County taxpayers should be kind of miffed. They're paying this guy $100,000 a year, and he doesn't even acknowledge that he has a full-time job, right? Um, oh, and the consulting sometimes nets him as much as $100 an hour. So, yeah, that's... Anyway, um, the point is, this guy still is on the Union County um, Parks Department, uh, but his modern contemporary, uh, who I don't think was around back then, at least uh, on the Parks Department, because I didn't find, maybe he was, or maybe he just had a different position, but uh, Ron Zuber, a contempor current contemporary of Daniel Benier uh, from the Union County Parks Department, said in an October 2016 public meeting held on the subject of mountain biking at the Watchum Trail Center, he, he flat out said uh, the government can't arbitrarily cease or begin enforcing an, uh, a piece of legislation. The legislation would have to be amended. So this is if you're if you're impatient to get bike access, don't talk to us. Talk to the freeholders. Here's the problem. Up until that point, nobody had really acknowledged that anybody had to change any any law or ordinance. They did not mention, again, this old ordinance from 1983 in the Open Public Record Act request follow-up when I asked which one it was. But then at the um, February 2015 meeting we had at the Galloping Hills Golf Course, nobody said anything about uh, uh, changing the law. All they were talking about was implementing bike access. Uh, nobody even pointed out there was... The only thing anybody said about the ban was one of the government people admitted in the privacy of this meeting, which wasn't open to the public, sadly, uh, one of the government people admitted in this meeting that what happened years ago was wrong, but they never mentioned changing any law or ordinance. They never said, hey, we're getting ahead of ourselves as legislation. So, you know, I got the feeling they didn't even believe that guff. Also, all the contradictions. But then you have, on one hand, the, Daniel Bonier from the Parks Department is saying that the official statement is that they allowed it from 93 through 95 and then arbitrarily resumed enforcement. The official statement from another guy from the Parks Department, Mr. Zuber, from 2016, two years later, is that the government cannot arbitrarily suspend or resume enforcing ordinances. So wait a minute. Is, is, is Daniel Benier saying they broke the, they essentially broke the law uh, in, in 1993 or 94, according to the NG.com, or whatever, you know, if that ever happened? Or is, um, is he just making that up? And we, we can look at his mountain biking white paper again, he flat out says it wasn't banned in, in 1993 when he when he makes the statement that they were considering banning it, but decided not to in 1993. So, you know, all of these inconsistencies, the only thing they get straight is that the actual ban was imposed in a back room. They had no documentation of a problem with mountain biking at Watchung at the time before banning it. And the first time this ordinance is specifically linked in writing uh, to the 1995 ban is from 2014. Those are the only three things they get in writing. Uh, they get they get 
that they agree on amongst themselves. And they're all three things that reflect extremely poorly on the government and in the history of the ban on mountain biking. It's like the only thing you can get wrong is stuff that makes you look shady. I, I should say the only thing you can get right uh, is stuff that makes you look shady. It's like they can't agree on anything essentially except that they're all a bunch of untrustworthy scoundrels. And that's the problem. And so the lesson learned from Watch on here, talking about lessons from Watch on, is that when you encounter these inconsistencies, a lot of times it should be a warning bell. It should be that canary in the coal mine. It should be that light bulb going off. It should be a friggin' submarine klaxon going, dive, dive, auga, auga, because it symbolizes that there's a greater problem there. Again, the fact that any of these questions or, or contradictions or contradictory statements exist in the first place, you could try and explain them away, but the fact that they even exist is proof that something fishy is going on. Because if there was a specific law or ordinance passed that specifically banned mountain biking and it was enacted on such and such a day, all they would have to do is read your chapter and verse, and there would never be a question. The very fact that these questions exist is indication that something something fishy happened. Something was not done in an above board manner. And the fact that the more they try and explain it, they just create more questions. Because they still can't get their story straight to this day, 20 years later. I think that says a lot. Okay. So as far as lessons from Watchung go, this lesson from Watchung is that when you see an inconsistency, a self-contradictory statement, or something that just flat out does not make sense, ask a question. Okay. Ask a pertinent question and you're, or I should say, ask an impertinent question and you're on your way to a pertinent answer. But don't just sit there and go, Oh, well, I guess that's just what the government says. I guess that's just what so-and-so says. No, it, if somebody can't get their story straight, if, if they contradict themselves, if they say something that flat out makes you ask yourself, am I in the twilight zone? Did they spike my coffee with LSD? Um, did I get hit on the head or something? Um, you know, what was in those brownies? Uh, if you have to ask yourself that when you read something in the newspaper or hear a public statement or whatever, then something's wrong. My advice to you, dig deeper. All right. Dig deeper. It may turn out to be a simple contradiction or there may turn out to be a history of obfuscation, dishonesty and uh, uh, misgovernment, as we found here in Union County. And if the government's not going to behave in an above board manner on something as small and insignificant in the big picture, as bike access, how the heck do you think they're going about making decisions on really big issues? Open question. But the point is, when you see that contradiction, when you see that statement that does not make sense, that, that statement that makes you ask yourself, did I just hear that right? You know, again, follow it up. Let that be the klaxon, the, the, the alarm bell going off, the light bulb turning on. Because almost invariably, it's going to be a signifier that there's a problem, that there's more there than somebody's telling you. So lesson from Wacha, in this case, when you see a contradiction, try to get to the bottom of it. It's usually a sign that something is wrong. Lone Rider out. <laughs>